So today I want to talk about what is menopause really? Well, it's simply a situation where you're running out of eggs. A woman has about 400 eggs and every month the egg gets released right around age 51, maybe a little bit earlier, a little bit later. You ran out of that last egg. You're done. No more menstruation, no more pregnancy. It's time to party, right? Well, then comes the hot flashes, the vaginal dryness, the vaginal atrophy, mood changes, weight gain, loss of libido, bone loss, and atrophy. So just when you thought things were going to be great, you got all these things to deal with. So what actually is happening is you're getting a shift in hormones, and there's three hormones that are involved. You have estrogen, testosterone, and progesterone. And these are not accurate, but I'm just going to show you the pattern. Typically, before menopause versus after, you're going to have a drop of estrogen about 50, maybe 40 to 50 percent. Testosterone is going to drop about 50 percent. But check this out. Progesterone is going to drop between 70 and 90 percent. So progesterone is the one that really crashes and burns. Progesterone counters and buffers estrogen. They work together. So if we're getting this massive drop in progesterone versus estrogen, we have this ratio that's out of balance. It's going to make estrogen appear dominant in the body. And this is why you have some of the symptoms right here, because it's estrogen dominance. When in reality, it is lower, but this is the one that actually makes it appear to be high in the body and creates a lot of problems. Now, the other thing you have to realize is that you have a backup mechanism, okay? A plan B, and that's the adrenals. The adrenals actually make these three hormones too. And they're supposed to act as a backup to the ovaries and give you the right amount of these hormones. Of course, you don't need the same amount of hormones as before menopause because you're not going to have a baby. But here's the issue. If these adrenals are weak going into menopause and they're not able to back up the ovaries appropriately, you're going to start seeing problems with these hormones because you're going to be deficient and you can start experiencing these symptoms right here. It happens all the time. In fact, 70% of women um, after menopause develop hot flashes. So in reality, all these symptoms are not normal. But if the adrenals are weak, that's when you really have the big problems. So what you really need to do is support the adrenals before menopause and try to keep your stress as low as possible. That's going to probably help you more than anything. Estrogen not only comes from the ovary and from the adrenals, it comes from your own fat. So depending on how much weight you're going to have, you're going to have certain levels of estrogen. So this could literally just go down slightly, maybe down, maybe, I don't know, 30 percent, maybe even 20 percent, making this difference here, this ratio even worse. So the real situation is this. The adrenals are just not backing up these ovaries right here. So number one, support the adrenals before menopause. But some of you watching are actually after menopause. So what do you do in that situation? Well, you do not go on a low-fat diet. Do not lower your dietary cholesterol. Why? Because all of these hormones are made out of cholesterol. That's the precursor. So if you actually go on a low-fat diet, low-cholesterol diet, you are going to negatively influence these hormones. All right, number three, counter high cortisol. Because the adrenals are acting to support the ovaries, you're going to get a spike in cortisol. Okay, that spike in cortisol is very damaging for, in, in several ways. One is it destroys your bone. That's why women after menopause sometimes develop osteopenia and even osteoporosis, and they get atrophy. It looks like cellulite, but it's really uh, a loss of muscle, which you're getting this atrophy or loose muscle tissue. And it looks like it's all fat, but it's not. It's just basically a loss of muscle tissue, and it's kind of sagging in the body. That is thanks to cortisol. Cortisol also affects the sleep cycle, and it also releases uh, stored sugar, so it raises insulin. It turns your own body proteins, especially the thigh and the leg muscles and your butt muscles, into glucose, which then triggers insulin. This is why after menopause, it's very difficult because of the darn cortisol that's raising the insulin. 
so I put some links down below on all sorts of things you can do to support the adrenals, but you definitely need to get on healthy keto and intermittent fasting to keep the insulin in check. That's your best bet for helping you lose weight and also helping you correct a very slow metabolism. Number four, it would make sense to do something to beef up, no pun intended, your progesterone. Wild yam cream is a really good remedy. There's others, but I recommend the wild yam cream for that. And that way, this will push this up and help you reduce some of these right here. Now, because your estrogen is a little bit higher, and that could be damaging because it's not being opposed by the progesterone effectively, I would recommend consuming more cruciferous vegetables just to keep that estrogen in check. Cruciferous vegetables, sea kelp, and something called DIM, which is basically concentrated cruciferous, all can help to balance these three estrogens and give you more of the good estrogen and less of the bad. So it's more protective against things like breast cancer, uh, things like that. And lastly, vitamin E. A lot of the vitamin E is stored in the pituitary gland that actually controls the adrenal and controls the ovary. And so vitamin E drops significantly after menopause. So if you actually take enough vitamin E in the correct type, which I'm going to tell you in a second, you can support the adrenals and the ovaries and minimize a lot of these symptoms right here. The type of vitamin E that I would recommend is not a synthetic version. I would get the natural tocopherol mix with something called tocotrienols, okay? Tocotrienols, you can look it up and get them in a whole a food blend and that can really support your pituitary and really help you reduce these symptoms right here. All right, check out the other videos I have on the screen to give you even more things you can do for menopause. Thanks for watching.